In this video lesson, I'm going to take you through how to answer the methods in context question. We're going to look at the common mistakes that are made when answering this question and then take you through the um, planning process and the breaking down of the question. We'll talk about the research considerations, how to plan your answer and how to structure the paragraph. Now, the methods in context question is different to the other essays that you have written. So it does require a different structure and a different set of skills. So you will need the um, worksheets that go along with this lesson. They should be attached to the assignment um, and they are in PowerPoint or PDF format, whichever is easiest for you to use. But there will be various points in the video where I'll ask you to stop the video, to pause it and to complete a task. If you're in the lesson, this is what we will be doing in the lesson. So let's start by looking at the common mistakes that people make. The first one is the same as when it, if you were looking at a, another essay and that's forgetting to use the item. The item must be used in at least one main body paragraph um, as part of your answer to show application. It says it clearly in the question and therefore must be included. We also find that people focus on the research method rather than the area of education. Now this is generally due to the way that the question is structured and the way the question is asked, which, for, which suggests that you need to look at the um, research method. And you do, but the main thrust of the paragraph, the main thrust of the question is looking at the area of education. So we should be focusing on that first, and the area of it, uh, and the research method secondly. Also find that people fail to give a clear answer to the question. Now this is where the methods in context question and other essays very much differ because we're not going to be using integrated paragraphs here but we, even without that you do need to determine an answer to the question. You can't say well it's all right but it's not great Either the method is very is good for studying in this area of education, or it's not, one or the other. You also find that people tend to offer alternatives to the method. So this method's not great, but it would be better if they used this method. You won't get penalised for this, but you also won't get any credit for it. So there's no point doing it. You stick to the method that you have been given in the question. Don't worry about alternatives or what would be a better essay. Alongside the fact that we don't often get uh, that sometimes we don't get a clear answer to the question, I sometimes find as well that I end up with a one sided essay. So, as I said, this question isn't the same structure as your normal essays where you have the integrated paragraphs and every paragraph is um, explaining why you've come to your answer. In a methods in context question, what you need to do is provide two paragraphs which back up your answer and one paragraph that counters your answer. So here we are looking for um, separate paragraphs rather than integrated ones. So the way that you show your evaluation on a methods in context question is twofold. The first is by determining whether the research method is good or bad, or helps to overcome a research consideration or not, and by showing that it's not a perfect method or a completely useless method by showing one paragraph against your answer and two paragraphs in favour. So let's start by looking at the planning process. It, the planning process has some similarities to the process that you're used to with other essays. However, it does also it is also distinct and unique to this question. So as with all questions, we will start with deconstructing the question. This is the most important part of the planning process because this is what makes sure that you know what you're doing. You know what you're being asked to do, what you're being asked about, and you are able to then stay focused on the requirements of the question rather than verbal vomiting or taking yourself off on a random tangent and not answering the question fully. We then go to potential participants and contexts. Now, 
this part of the planning process is to identify where you can best get your data from and where your research will be taking could take place. So this is where we start differing from the um, other essay plans that you have done. We then look at the research considerations. Both step two and step three are focusing on the area of education. They are not about the research method. We completely ignore the research method when looking at stage step two and step three. We are just focusing on the area of education. Step four is when we bring in the research method. And that's when we think about the strengths and limitations of whichever method has been mentioned in the question. Now you might find some of these in the item, so it's a good way to link your item in, but not necessarily all. We then bring it together. And what I mean when I say about help or hinder, does the research method help or overcome the issues related to um, this area of education or um, investigating this area of education, or does it not? So you, this is where you're deciding whether or not the research method is a good method or it isn't. And then finally, we're going to write, you're going to write your model answer. You're going to actually put it all together into the essay format. So throughout this video, we're going to go through this process step by step with activities to help you understand exactly what it is you need to do for methods and context questions. So starting with de deconstructing the question, this is not dissimilar to what you have done with other essays. It, we're still looking for command words, we're still looking for focuses, um, but it is. But we also need to identify the area of education and the research method. So for the purposes of this video and this for this lesson, we're going to be using this question, applying material from item B18 and your own knowledge of research methods, evaluate the strengths and limitations of structured interviews for the study of the extent of parental choice in education. Now, as I said, we still have the same command words that we have with the other essays. So we're still using apply. So we have to use the item. We're still um, explicitly in our essays and we're still using evaluate meaning look at both sides look at both the strengths and limitations of the um, method to determine whether or not it is a good method or not the area of education this is the focus of the research what is it that you're actually going to be investigating so in the case of this question our area of education is parental choice or parentocracy. Okay. So it's about being clear what area of the education system or the sociology of education is it that the proposal is suggesting. Our research method is structured interviews. Now, in this question, we're quite lucky. It's given us a very specific type of research method. It could have just been interviews where we'd have to take into account that there are different types of interview. But for this one, we have been given a very clear method in structured interviews. Now, in terms of the focus, there aren't any in this particular question, but the focus means anything that's going to narrow down the question. It's going to limit the question. So it might be that it suggests a particular participant group. It might be a specific effect. So it could be, is it about affecting um, achievement or attainment? Is it about um, the effect on behavior or experiences in school? So sometimes we do have a focus point, but not always. So if we're trying to turn this question into a binary question and kind of yes, no question, what we're being asked is, are structured interviews a good way to study parental choice? So you're going to answer, yes, it is or no, it isn't. OK, so that is what you are being asked. That is what you're being. You have to be definitive on where you can't sit on the fence. It's made of barbed wire. It's electrified. It's on fire. You can't sit on it. Is it a good way of studying parental choice or is it not? So here's your first task. In your workbook, you have got two example questions. So I want you to pause the video here and break down those questions, identifying the 
command words, the area of education, the research method and any focus points that happen to be in that question. So pause the video here and complete this task in the pack that has been attached to this assignment. Now that we know what our question is asking us and what area of education we're focusing on, what our research method is, we're now going to look at identifying potential participants and the context. Now, this is about the area of education. It is not about the research method. So at this point of the planning process, you are ignoring the um, research method. You are just focusing on the research method. Now, there is an assumption that because the research is taking place in schools, that students are going to be the participants. And that's not always the case. You need to think carefully about who can give you the best data. Who is it that can provide you with the information you need to be able to conduct your research? Now, that may well be students. But it could also be teachers, it could be parents, it could be the school in, as an institution, it could be SLT, the senior leadership team, or it might be the special educational needs department. But it is about who can give you, who can provide the best data for you. And that links into our net, the, the context of your research. And this again, there is an assumption that because the research is taking place in a school, that the school is going to be the context. And that might be the case for a majority of research into education, but it's not always. And you also need to think about where in the school you would be the best place to get your data from. It could be the classroom, it could be the staff room, it could be communal areas such as playgrounds, corridors, um, in Wyndham College boarding houses. But it could also be outside of school, particularly if your parent, if your um, potential participants are the parents, you don't need to involve the school. You can access the parents without involving the school. So therefore, you would not use the school as your um, as your your context. So in this particular stage of the planning process, you're thinking about who and where is the best way to get my data. And that's without having looked at the research method. You're not looking at the research method at the moment. You are looking at the area of education. So your task now in your um, workbooks is to identify the potential participants and potential context for the example areas of education you've been given. Now, there are 15 on, in the grid and it is not an exclusive list. It is, um, they, they, this is made up of model um, questions I have been able to get access to as well as some ideas of my own as to what you could be asked about. So for each one I want you to identify who your potential participants could be. You can tick the box, you can highlight the box, you can put a cross in the box, it's completely up to you but also identify the context and setting of your research. So pause the video here and make your determinations. The next stage of, your re of the planning process is to identify the research considerations. These are sometimes referred to as research um, issues or research um, characteristics, but they all mean the same thing. And that is what, is what are the possible issues, possible problems a researcher may face when looking at this area of education. And again, I'm going to reiterate this as many times as I can, but you are not looking at the research method. You are only looking at the area of education. Now, some of these research considerations, such as ethics, time, detachment and objectivity, will also apply to the research method when you're evaluating the research method. But at the moment, we are just focusing on the research 
area. So um, for, for our model question, uh, our example question, we're looking at what are the issues relating to, to investigating parental choice? Again, not looking at the research method. Now, I'm not going to go through these in the video. It would make the video far too long. And also in your pack, you have them explained in a in, in one of the pages. So but you do need to remember as many of these as you can. Now, some of them will come up more regularly than others. For example, impression management, time, ethics, language come up very regularly as issues in studying different areas of education. So by thinking about those um, characteristics, those issues, you still have your paragraphs. But each one of these characteristics that applies to the area of education can start the basis of your paragraphs. And we'll come on to that later. So using the information in your pack, that takes you through what each of these means. Your task is to identify which research considerations or issues apply to each of the areas of education that are listed in the grid. And it's the same list that we've had, we, we, you just did for context and participants. So you, you need to look at that as well because those participants and those contexts will in, will influence which of the research considerations apply. So each one should have a minimum of three or four characteristic, uh, sorry, considerations, but you are to decide which ones apply to each of those areas of education. Again, tick, cross, highlight, whatever you choose, but there is no real right or wrong answer here. It's about you determining which ones apply and why, because that is going to formulate the first part of any paragraph you write in a methods in context question. So pause the video here and complete the table in the pack that has been attached to this assignment. So now that we've done, dealt with the area of education, we, we've identified the issues with studying that area of education, we've identified our possible participants and the setting or context of where the research could take place. It is now at stage four that we start looking at the research method and evaluating the research method. Now, you have got the flashcards, which um, outline some of the strengths and limitations of each of the main methods. Um, but this table is kind of a reminder as to the things you need to think about. So we've, I've divided them up into practical, ethical and theoretical, just as a way of remembering them. But just as a side, just remember that legality is not a, an ethical consideration, it's a moral consideration but it doesn't really fit anywhere else, which is why we put it in with ethics. So you need to think about your practical, ethical and theoretical strengths and limitations of the method. So if we look at the strengths and limitations of the method that we've been given in our practice question, we're looking at structured interviews. So if we look, first of all, at the strengths of a structured interview, we can talk about how it has a high response rate. Okay. Meaning that you get a lot of people, uh, you get the, of the people that you ask, you generally get more responses from it. Um, but it does take a lot of time to conduct because you generally conduct a uh, uh, um, structured interview one-on-one -on -one, and to get the high numbers of participants in order to create validity and reliability uh, sorry validity and generalizability and representativeness you it does take quite a lot of time it is also quite inflexible okay 
meaning that um, you can't change your approach with a, a structured interview. You have a set of questions that you are required to ask in a set order. And you can't deviate from that. You can't ask the participant additional questions. You have to stick to the, the list of questions you've been given. Um, you've also got, um, in terms of ethics, you, you have got very few ethical considerations. Um, Okay. And that's because in terms of sensitive questions and things like that, the researcher is present in order to um, kind of alleviate any of that. But you also you would formulate those questions carefully prior to the research taking place to ensure that, that they are handled in an appropriate, sensitive way. There's no protection from harm issues, that, which can't be dealt with with, uh, with debriefing. So if somebody is triggered by what you're asking them, then there could be there is debriefing afterwards. Um, they have the right to withdraw just by not answering your questions. Um, there, you are able to get informed consent prior to starting the research. So the, there isn't really any ethical problems with using a structured interview. Um, the only issue you might come up with in terms of ethics is, is more the moral situation of the legality, where depending on what you're asking about, the, re the participant may not be able to answer for legal reasons, especially if there is an ongoing court case. They would be required not to talk about the, the case or the situation that they're involved in. But that's a very minor kind of ethical or moral um, weakness to a structured interview. Now, in terms of theoretical um, strengths, you have got the ability to um, explain questions. So that can mean that your reliability, your sorry, your validity is higher in terms of accuracy because there's less misunderstanding of the question. You also have high reliability due to the questions being set and asked in the same order with each participant. You also are able to build a rapport with the participant, which can lead to more in-depth and accurate answers. However, you do get researcher effects. In particular, demand characteristics and um, social desirability, because the researcher is present, the researcher is there. So they, they could lead to um, researcher effects. You also have um, issues with um, the validity in terms of depth, not because the questions are closed, because they could be open or they could be closed. It's more about the fact that the researcher is not able to expand upon the answers that the, the participants are given. They have, they have a set number of questions, they have a set order of questions, that they're not allowed to deviate from. So it could lead to limitations in terms of depth. Okay, so it's these strengths and limitations that you need to be thinking about when you're evaluating the research method. So now we're on to step five. And step five is looking at bringing it together. So in terms of parental um, choice, we've identified five possible research considerations. Now we tend to go for five, even though we only need four, uh, three paragraphs, because we need to make sure that we have a balance or we have both strengths and limitations in our answer. So this gives us more opportunity to find those strengths and limitations. So having identified 
our research considerations, we now need to think about whether or not the research methods helps or hinders. So I'm going to do the first one for you, and then your task is going to be to finish it off in your pack. So the, for impression management, the research method, in my opinion, does not help overcome the issue of impression management. Now, the reason why is because the researcher is present and you get those researcher effects of demand characteristics and um, social desirability. Um, and social desirability. Okay, so it, it is not a useful method to use to overcome the issue of impression management. So if you now pause the video here, go to your pack and you decide whether or not structured interviews help overcome the issues of time, peer group pressures, personal characteristics and language when researching parental choice. You've been given why the um consider why it is a consideration what i want you to do now is to determine whether or not the research method overcomes or does not help overcome the this issue okay so we've now got a full plan together and in your pack you've got the full plan um laid out so or a, a model plan laid out so your task now is to take the two example questions that you've been given and complete the plan for those questions so you have identified you've already identified the research considerations in the, in the grid table that you did and you just need to remember your research um methods strengths and limitations but fully complete the plan so that means five considerations if possible as well as, and both helping and hindering and you need to come to a conclusion you need to determine whether the method is a good method or whether the method is not now we come to the point of writing a model answer or writing your answer and putting it together now in terms of your introduction it's still very much the same as what you have done for your previous essays however it's a little bit more chunky because we've got two elements of the question that we need to deal with in the introduction so the first thing we're going to do is context in terms of education so this is exactly the same as what you would do for any other essay that you've written you need to determine whether or not the context for the area of education is a trend, a definition or a um, background. And again, it's to show the exam that you understand what the area of education is. So in this case, we are using definition because parental choice or parentocracy is a key sociological term. And in two sentences, you just need to answer that question what is meant by parental choice we then go on to content but in this case it is about identifying the research considerations that you're going to um, talk about so our context about two sentences the identification of the research considerations is one sentence and i've given you a sentence starter here when studying whatever the area of education is a researcher would need to consider a b and c and those are the three research considerations that you're going to look at in your essay. Now, this is where we deviate from the normal research method, uh, sorry, um, introduction that you're used to, because we're going to go back to context. But in this case, it's the context of the research methods. As I said, there are two elements to this essay that you need to be taking into account. Now, with the research method, it's always going to be a definition. Okay, you're going to tell the examiner you know what a structured interview is, you know what an observation is, you know what a non-participant observation is, 
you know what a field experiment is but whatever it is just in one or two sentences defining the research method then you're going to talk about the strengths and limitations of that research method so again only two sentences use of this method is good or useful because a and b it's limited because of x and y okay you don't need to put them all in there you just need to show an awareness that there are issues and strengths with the research method and then finally as always directly answer the question are structured interviews the best way to study parental choice yes or no and it's always a yes no answer either it is a good method or it is not a good method but you have to make that determination there is no right or wrong answer the exam board is not looking for you to give a particular answer they're looking at your analysis and evaluation skills here and to do that you have to come to an answer when it comes to the main body paragraph this is a, a big deviation from your usual re, um, essay writing structure and it is unique to the methods in context question so it's not weeble it's not the we uh, the why the what explain uh, um evaluate link apply where it fits it is a very distinct paragraph in terms of how it needs to be written the first part is identifying the research considerations so your first thing you're going to do is tell me one of which research consideration you are talking about in this S this paragraph and I'm giving you a sentence starter there one research consideration that sociologists would need to consider is that's all you need to do make it absolutely 100% clear what the research method you are looking at oh sorry not method research consideration or research issue you are looking at is going to be you then need to explain why it is a research consideration what is it about this area of education that means that this thing whatever it is whichever consideration you're talking about is an issue and this is where you show your sociological knowledge of education because you're looking at the area of education you are not talking about the research method in these two elements of your paragraph the research method should not be mentioned at all you are focusing on the area of education okay it's in this third part that you bring in your research method and this is the application and evaluation because you, it's application because you're identifying the research method but it's evaluation because you're determining whether or not the research method helps or hinders so would it overcome the issue would it not overcome the issue again single sentence it could be at the start of a sentence or it could be a whole sentence but the use of whatever the method is would or would not overcome the issue the research consideration the research issue that you are talking about you then explain why it helps the issue or why it doesn't help the issue and this is where you bring in the strengths and limitations of the method okay so you, again, it's only two, two sentences, two or three sentences, but you need to say to show the examiner that you understand that this method helps overcome the issue and why, or it doesn't help overcome and why. Okay. And then you link back to your answer. Therefore, this method is a good method when using re, when studying this area of education, or despite this, it's still a good area to a good method to use. When studying this area of education now in terms of application in terms of um, the item or a study or a sociologist or anything like that again it goes where it fits put it where it works don't worry about um, putting it in a particular area put it where it fits but there must be some application in each essay in each paragraph okay so here's your task in your workbook you have got this model introduction and first paragraph for the question that we've been looking at in as our, our example what i want you to do 
is to annotate and highlight this, this answer showing all of those elements that I've told you need to be included. So they're all in there, but you need to show me where they are. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can then go and look at the other two essays that you've planned and do the introduction slash paragraph for those if you wish, but that is optional. Your task now is to read through and annotate and highlight the model answer.